So just as far as looking at a lower extremity uh, screening exam, the first thing you want to do is just take a look at the body type of your patient. So go ahead and bring your feet together. And then you look to see, is there genu varum or genu valgum? Are they pes planus, pes cavus? Do they have a flat lumbar spine or do they have a, a hyperlordosis? Is there asymmetries within any of the, uh, in the calves, in the gastrox, in the gluteal region? This will give you an idea on what their, their basic setup is. Now, if I have him bring his feet shoulder width apart, now what we can do is take a look at how his statics are, meaning does he tend to shift to one side or does he tend to shift to the other side? And you can always ask them, do you have a favorite hip? that you shift to. And that might give you an idea on when they have to put load through this area, how are they compensating? Then what you do is have them cross their arms and then you'll have them rotate their whole body one way and you look for supination, pronation, see what's going on in the knees and see if they have good mobility in the hips, knees, ankle and feet. And you should see opposite pronation, supination, opposite internal, external rotation and fluid motion either way. So that will give you a general idea on how they're moving. Another quick screen you could do is something called a load transfer test where you just have them step forward like a normal walking step and then come back and then with the other leg. And what you wanna do is pay attention to this area right here and see if they tend to shift more one way compared to the other. So if I have him bring his right leg forward and keep it there and put weight equally between both legs in a normal stance, I will just push and see if he loses balance or tends to shift or compensate. Now I can bring the other leg forward and then I can push and you can see already, I would, you can predict that he tends to ride up high on this side and low on the other side. So I know in the lower extremity, whatever's going on, there might be something with right push off or left heel strike. We do functional weight bearing tests so I can have him go into a squat. And when he goes into a squat, I can look to see if there's a limitation on dorsiflexion. If there's a limitation in dorsiflexion, that's in the clinical practice guidelines for ankle sprain, Achilles tendinopathy, and also uh, plantar fasciitis. So come on up this way. And we can do a climbers. And when he does the climbers, we're looking for hip extension or a load transfer or load uh, acceptance of the hip in either directions. And then we can do the climber in the other direction. Seeing if this reproduces pain or is really stiff or, or uncomfortable for the patient. And then come on back. If we felt there was a meniscal issue, even in standing, you could palpate and see if there's joint line tenderness. So how you would palpate that is you would find the head of the fibula and find that joint line just going superior and palpate and they can say, oh, that's my pain. If you felt that was the pain, you could basically do a Thessalese. If there's clicking, popping, sense of instability and joint line tenderness, that sets the patient up for what you would think would be a meniscal issue. In supine, you can quickly go ahead and bend your knees, lift your bottom up, come back down. You can look in general to see if there's a leg length issue. You can look to see if there's any discoloration, look to see if there's any atrophy as well. We can do a straight leg raise, which sometimes will just check hamstring length, but you can also check to see if there's a neurodynamic issue. You can dorsiflex and straight leg raise and see if that causes reproduction of symptoms or decreased mobility. Remember, this is heel strike with walking. You can check that on both sides as well. So those are just some general neurodynamics. Then we can do some of our basic selective tissue tension tests where we do active range of motion over pressure and see if that causes any discomfort. When we get up into this flex position, we're looking to see if there's a restriction in flexion or not. And then also, how are they doing on that inner quadrant? Is there any sense that there might be a labral pathology or any discomfort going into that area? If I bring them into flexion and internally rotate them and adduct them, are they getting pain out here? That would be more of a gluteal tendinopathy issue, which is one of the low hanging fruits because if they have that, they're increasing load through there, they would also have pain with palpation in that area. As far as the knee is concerned, Oh, we'll just do one more thing in the hip. If there's a gross loss of internal rotation, 
versus external rotation, that's one of the first signs of maybe early onset of osteoarthritis or an imbalance between the two. You could also look at Faber and look to see how that is compared to the other side and see if there's a, 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 a bigger restriction there. As far as the knee is concerned, you would palpate right along the joint line for joint line tenderness and see if there was any provocation there. You could also check mobility of the superior tib-fib joint, see if it feels restricted. That's also one of those joints that can restrict range of motion with rotation. In the ankle itself, you can also check to see if there's a limitation in dorsiflexion and see if there's a difference in weight-bearing versus non-weight-bearing. You can check dorsiflexion, you can check plantar flexion. We can check the subtalar joint, we can get onto the sustenaculum tally, hold, and then we can evert the foot. And then once we get it at full eversion, we can just see if we can bring the subtalar joint into further eversion by pushing the calcaneus this way. So again, you find sustenaculum tally, you get regular eversion, you're fixing right along the fibula, and then you ride the wave. If we felt there was a gluteal tendinopathy, we could just palpate right at the greater trochanter, realizing this back edge, this is piriformis. You drop down a little bit, that's obturator internus in inferior gemelles and quadratus femoris. And we know the sciatic nerve slides there. And then once you find those muscles, if you go lateral, you would find glute med and glute min. Glute med and glute min are the common tendinopathies that you have with lateral hip pain. And your fader would also be, which we showed in supine, would also tend to be positive as well. That patient may have pain sleeping on one side compared to the other side, maybe a habitual person who crosses their knees as well. In prone, we can bend the knees and just check and see if there's a limitation in internal rotation and extension on one side compared to the other. In this case, there's a greater loss of internal rotation in this left hip. The only other criteria that you would look at if you felt the person had leg pain and you felt they had intermittent claudication, you can palpate pulses, you can palpate the popliteal pulse. They complain of uh, increased leg pain with walking after 15 minutes. You're thinking, oh, it's a stenotic or they've had a procedure. You look to see if there's increased swelling, see if there's pitting edema and tenderness in the calf. Those are the Wells criteria and you're looking for, if you have two or three of those, then you send the patient in and let them know that, that let the doctor know that they're positive with the Wells criteria. This is a, a, a bigger screen just looking for articular restrictions and biasing it towards gait and function, heel strike and push off, because that's what are some, what's the main driver of people coming in with lower extremity issues.